Hello and welcome back to Picks and Portraits. In keeping with both the theme of the month, Spooky, and the current theme of the channel, Propaganda, I wanted to look at one of the more bizarre entries in the Universal Monster series, Invisible Agent. Now, for those unfamiliar with the Universal Monsters, they were adaptations of classic horror stories by Universal Studios, produced between the 1920s and the 1950s, the most popular of which are probably Dracula and Frankenstein, portrayed by Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff respectively. Both of these came out in 1931, and while the first Universal Monster is technically Quasimodo from 1923's Hunchback of Notre Dame, these two are generally credited with kicking off the franchise. Lugosi and Karloff, along with Claude Rains and the Lon Chaney's, junior and senior, appeared in many movies in the series, portraying their iconic characters, or swapping roles and crossing over, forming film's first shared universe. The Universal Monsters came to include, amongst others, The Mummy, Wolfman, and The Creature from the Black Lagoon. In 1933, Universal adapted the H.G. Wells novel The Invisible Man, starring Claude Rains as the titular... man. This follows the exploits of a chemist, Dr. Jack Griffin, who discovers a way to become invisible and uses it for nefarious means. The film is notable for its special effects, its wire work and puppetry, and launched The Invisible Man into the upper echelons of the Universal Monsters. The box office success of the monsters and these films spawned many sequels, some good, even great, like The Bride of Frankenstein, and some not so great. The Invisible Man begat The Invisible Man Returns, which featured Vincent Price assuming the lead. Spoiler. Uh, this would in turn be followed by a comedic spin-off, The Invisible Woman, in 1940. American industry was mobilized following the attack on Pearl Harbor and America's entry into World War II, and this included entertainment. While radio was by far the most accessible form of wartime entertainment, film was the most desirable. I've talked about how effective film is as propaganda, and doing its part in the war effort, Hollywood set out to boost morale at home. Movie stars would appear in public service announcements, uh, pushing war bonds, usually, and the films produced celebrated patriotism, uh, often with the promise of victory. In 1942, Universal would send one of its monsters to the front line with Invisible Agent. In it, John Hall plays Frank Raymond, an alias. He is actually the grandson of the original Invisible Man and is in possession of the invisibility formula. Throughout the film, he is pursued by Nazi and Japanese agents and works as a spy for the U.S. government. It features the usual blatant xenophobia and racism, most notably Peter Lorre's yellow-faced portrayal of Baron Akito, and presents Nazis as incompetent, which I'm sure was very reassuring to audiences, <laughs> viewing it in a post-Pearl Harbor world. The film was written by Kurt Siedemack, a Jewish-German refugee that had seen the rise of Nazism firsthand. Uh, it's worth mentioning that despite its campiness and heavy-handed message, there are some great special effects, like a scene where the Invisible Man vanishes as he parachutes into Berlin, Excellent. There is also some awesome mat work that is very impressive for the time. Uh, would I describe it as good? No, but I did really enjoy watching it. Invisible Agent would be followed by The Invisible Man's Revenge, which once again cast John Hall as a new Invisible Man, an escaped mental patient. Not that the Universal Monsters are known for the continuity. Uh, so that's how a monster was mobilized during World War II. If this seemed a little short or rushed, it was. I was doing research for an upcoming video and stumbled upon this and it fit way too well not to get its own. It serves as a precursor to both the finale of Animation Propaganda and said upcoming video, so stay tuned for those. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and share it, tell a friend. Uh, we are entirely viewer supported, I don't believe in running ads, so if you want to support the channel you can do so at patreon.com slash picsandportraits and get a ton of exclusive content in return. As always, thank you so much for your interest in this channel, and thank you so much for watching.